What's going on guys? So 200 miles on the Can-Am and I already have an issue. The dreaded clunk is here. So I started hearing it right around 100 miles on the Can-Am. First couple trips that we did weren't bad. Like I didn't hear any noises. And then after a few trips, we did a couple of trail rides and then I started hearing it at low speeds, just driving on the trails. And then it got worse to the point that at the dunes, that's all I was able to hear was the clunk and it was just driving me nuts. I didn't know what it was. So after doing some investigating, I figured out it was my sway bar links and I was kind of shocked. Less than 200 miles on them on a brand new Can-Am, they are making noise. And to make matters worse, it wasn't just the front. It was actually the back making noise too. So I started hearing it in the front first and then I started hearing it in the back. So today, we're gonna get rid of that issue once and for all. So at first, I thought it was the bolts got, that got loose and that's a known issue as well that these bolts loosen up on here, these nuts and they kind of rattle on here. That was definitely not the issue because I retorqued the bolts and these guys still made a lot of noise. The passenger side is the one that is super loose, you can see on here. The clunk isn't bad when you're moving it when it's just standing still, but when you are riding and it gets that initial jolt, you can hear it through the entire frame. It sounds like something's wrong with your shocks or it sounds like there's something legitimately wrong and it just kind of makes you feel like you don't want to screw, uh, screw up your X3 even more. In the back, the passenger side is a little bit tighter than the driver side. And again, I retorque these bolts. Um, so I know that these guys are not loose. It's not rattling on there, but the driver side, you can hear it rattle in under a hundred miles of owning the Can-Am. Today, we're gonna be taking care of that issue with shock therapy. And these are a little bit beefier. Comparing apples to apples, this is like one of those situations where it's you versus the guy that she tells you not to worry about. You could see how much beefier um, the shock therapy links are. Absolutely monsters comparing to these, uh, this little joke here. This is the one that was, this is the one that was making the noise, the clunking noise, and you can hear it. It's all loose and rattled out here. This one actually pulls out slightly and so does this one. You can you can pull it out slightly. Here are the fronts from Shock Therapy and these are definitely beefcakes. You can't even can't even move this with your fingers. Now we're going to adjust these to length and use the hardware that they provide with the spacers and pop these guys in. All 
right, so I just got off the phone with shock therapy because I was installing, I installed one of the rears and I was gonna take a look at the front real quick and see how it goes in. Well, this guy has a huge spacer on here. The one that this is for is essentially for the ones that have the same setup instead of a tab, it has like a through tube type of deal like this. And the reason why it has this big spacer is because it goes into that tube like this to strengthen the inner tube when you attach the link to it. Well, in my case, I have a tab. So this is an entirely wrong uh, link kit. I got off the phone with Shock Therapy and basically they looked up my order and I ordered the right ones and they sent me the wrong ones. They are actually overnighting me the correct ones for my Can-Am. I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed, no issues. They said the return label is gonna be in the box. So we're gonna knock out the back ones and tomorrow we're gonna do the front ones. That goes to show you how great their customer service is. Things like that happen, but the fact that they took care of it, they're gonna overnight me the new part and everything is gonna be quick, easy, and painless. And literally, next day delivery here got the right ones for the front we're gonna be using four pieces of the shorter hardware adjust these to size and uh, put them in so a couple things um, spacers these spacers right here are important uh, which side is which and what size it is and the way you install this so you want to have your link measured at three and a quarter from center hole center hole the largest spacer is going to go towards the arm and your smaller spacer is going to be on the outside up top you're going to have the smaller spacer and then the regular spacer on the outside install through the arm washer nut bolt goes through the back towards the front washer and nut all right now we got to tighten everything up Last but not least, all you gotta do is tighten that jam nut and you are done. And right off the bat, I can tell that that clunk is gone. As you can tell, I got 206 miles on this. Obviously, it's the, the Can-Am is still brand new and I still have warranty on it. And I could have went through the dealer and tried to have them replace the links, but in the long run, I know it's just gonna be a waste of my time and a waste of everybody else's time. And eventually out on the trail, I would have been, screw this, I'm done, I'm getting something better. As of right now, I am extremely happy and I will keep you guys updated if anything changes or if they randomly just fall apart, I'll post it up. So if you do the fronts and the rears, it'll come out to be just over $300. And when you're paying that kind of money for some links, um, obviously you want them to last and you want them to be on there for a while and not make noise and be all annoying. It was almost like a confidence killer 
Um, you know, going down a dune, you start hitting some whoops and you start hearing the clunk, 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 clunk. It's almost like something's broken, like you're doing something wrong. You don't want to push it. You don't, you want to try to baby it. I am disappointed in the fact that the factory links only lasted around 100 miles. So, so the next video that I am going to be posting is about the shocks being inverted. Um, lots of guys are doing it putting the piggyback on the outside and uh, gonna try to figure out why. If you guys like the video, make sure you hit the like button, smash that subscribe button, check out my Instagram page. I love talking to you guys on there and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.